In the height of the dry season, everything must come to the river. From dawn to dusk, animals converge on the banks of the Levuvu as it winds its way through the many habitats of an area known as Pafuri. It's a lifeline to all creatures, great and small. And the lapwings have done well to secure a spot on the banks. It's the height of the dry season, and the water level is at its lowest. The best time for nesting on the sandy banks. The Lapwings River is called the Luvuvu, and it flows through a very special piece of wilderness known as the Pafuri. Situated in the northeast of South Africa, Kruger National Park covers some 7,500 square miles. It's sandwiched between two rivers, the Limpopo to the north and the Luvuvu to the south. When they break their banks, they nourish a great floodplain that covers much of Pafuri. Here, lush lowlands feed herds of grazers, and iconic forests grow tall and green. The river flows from west to east across the park, shaping the landscape and attracting its wildlife. In the northern reaches of the Kruger National Park, life depends on one thing, water. It's a lifeline to all creatures, great and small. From dawn to dusk, Animals converge on the banks of the Levuvu as it winds its way through the many habitats of an area known as Pafuri. The Lapwings River is called the Luvuvu, and it flows through a very special piece of wilderness known as the Pafuri. It's sandwiched between two rivers, the Limpopo to the north and the Luvuvu to the south. Beyond the fever trees, a herd of African buffalo grazes out in the open. The grasses grow tall on the floodplain, but they're dry and tough at this time of year. This doesn't phase the buffaloes. They prioritize quantity over quality and can subsist on coarser fodder than most grazers. The herd is a moving restaurant for oxpeckers that pick away at pests and parasites. Where the Levuvu meets the dry bed of the Limpopo, in Pafuri's easternmost corner, it has formed a natural dam deep enough for a pod of hippos. These huge animals have sensitive skins and spend most of their days submerged to escape the heat of the sun. This bull is in charge here. 
Should he need to assert his control, he can open his jaw to 150 degrees, bearing 20-inch long tusks. For now, he relaxes in the cool of the water with his pod. Away from the Luvuvu, a few small wetlands persist. It's attracted six big bulls. Among them is the young bull that was in the river this morning. The gathering at the water offers him some company at last. The heavyweight with the injured trunk is here too. Neither can compete with the biggest of these bachelors. He wears a tracking collar and researchers have been following him for the last 10 years. He's now in his prime at around 45 and has picked up scars of his own during his long life. If all goes well, he could live to around 60. The other bulls give him plenty of space at the thirst-quenching water. Like all here, they too must drink. The trickle of the river here is enough to satisfy the birds' needs, but there is one resident of Pafuri whose demands are far greater. Hippos need water deep enough to submerge their great bodies entirely. During the dry season, there are few places in Pafuri where this exists. But the eagles are resourceful. They prey on a variety of smaller life, including water birds. They're also fearless thieves, stealing prey from others as big as the saddle-billed stork. All this makes them formidable river mates for the other species. Like all here, they too must drink. <laughs> 